Welcome students to your introduction slides for analytics, analytics of business intelligence. Now, if you came to the Q&A sessions, um, either at 6.40 or at 9 o'clock, you would have seen that uh, we would have got up to slides 14. So basically, we, we ended the slides basically at the point where we downloaded R and we downloaded R Studio. All right. So if you missed any of the Q&A sessions, the introduction Q&A sessions, please go back to the previous slides. First of all, check out the syllabus, check out the structure of the class, and then download R and R Studio. If you have any problems, shoot me an email or come to one of the Q&A sessions and we can talk about that. All right. But given that you have downloaded R and R Studio uh, successfully, we are now on slide 15 of the introduction slides. All right. This is what you should essentially be seeing. This is R Studio, and and also for my students that already know programming, you've already done R. Okay, this is basically an introduction to R, so you can fast forward through this video, skim the slides, what have you. So this, I'm taking the point of view now from a person that's completely new to programming and completely new to R. So here you have your R Studio terminal. I opened it up. You don't have to open R. R is already there. R Studio sits on top of R. In fact, this, you'll see three windows here. The console, right here. There's three tabs here, terminal and jobs. You don't have to worry about that right now. Console is the main one we care about. To your right, you're gonna see something, another four tabs. And down here, the bottom right screen, you'll see five tabs. All right, and we'll, we'll slowly, I'll slowly explain as we, as we come, out, come across these different features of R Studio when we use them, when we need them. For now, let's focus on the console right here. Okay, so here in the console, right, before I even do slide 15, right, if I simply type in 2 plus 2, I get the answer for it, all right? This is like your TI-85 calculators from back in the days. This does the math for you. This console actually automatically takes any command you put here at the arrow, and it sends it to R. Hold on, let me zoom in a little bit more, all right? It's probably easier to see. And it sends it to R, R processes it, and it gives you the output right here, the number four. Now you'll see the number four over here. Now some of you will be asking, what is that right next to it? Well, great question. The square bracket, one square bracket, that's basically just saying how many outputs were there in this row. Because you can get rows of outputs, right? We just have one output, it's the number four, and it's basically just saying, hey, this four, is just the first output okay the purpose behind this is that you can get and you will see we're gonna get <clears throat> rows and rows and rows of numbers coming at us and results right and R likes to index what position each one of those values are in and you'll see that when we have a larger output I'll circle back and show you what's going on here again all right so if you do 2 plus 3 5 boom boom Nice, nice and easy, straightforward. Now, here, I have something else going on over here. Here, you see this untitled five in my slide, 15. What, what is that? Well, now, I'm going to open up an R script file. And that R script file is where you guys will do your R programming. That is actually essentially what we do. You can type R code and you can do it here in the console, but it's highly inefficient. You don't want to do that. All right, so if you go here to the top, this plus green sign, click on this. You see this nice drop down, pop down, and I'll see a whole bunch of cool things come up. Shiny web app, we'll talk about a little bit later. All right, actually towards the end of the semester if we can get to it. Text files, C++ files, even a Python script file, right? R SWE for any of you guys that messed around with that, any presentations. We just want a nice, simple R script file, the first one. I click on this, you see this untitled one pops up right here. This is equivalent to how when you guys open up an Excel sheet, you know, untitled Excel sheet opens up, or you open up a Word document, untitled Word document opens up. This is the file that you're going to save. This is the file to save. In fact, I will save this. I created a class folder for our semester, and you guys should create a class folder for your for the semester as well, where you can save all your programs and you can save all your files, uh, download all your files, not just the slides for the class, but also for the um, the data behind it, the data behind it. So here, I'm going to do file. See up here, I go all the way up here. Save as. 
right? Just like a Word document. And now I'm just going to go down to where my class is. And I have classy, where are you? ABI, ABI, fall 2020. And that's my folder. And here I'll call this intro. Uh, I'll call this just intro, right? You click save and look what happened. You got the name intro and you got an extension dot capital R. Going forward now in your computer, now that you have R, any R file will have the extension dot capital R. And any R program you write will have the extension automatically dot capital R. Just like document, Word documents have dot doc, just like Excel documents have dot xls, for R it's dot capital R. All right, so here you go. All right, intro to R. And that's basically what we see up here. Now here, I mean, I typed in this equation right here, this fancy equation. Let me go ahead and type something similar. I'll do 1100. I'll follow the same one. Why not? All right, I have this down here. I'll copy it. Be careful when you copy from my uh, PowerPoint, my PDF slides. Okay, in this case, it looks like there wasn't many mistakes. There's a lot of space errors that happen. I don't know why I try to figure out why the PDF software is doing that. See right here. So I have this equation. All right. Feel free to pause and at this point type in this equation, right? Or you can copy and paste and just make the fixes like I did. 1100 times 1 1.1 to the power of 4. 1100 times 1 1.1 to the power of 3. Plus 1100 times 1 1.1 to the power of 2, etc., etc. All right. This is just a mathematical equation that I want to solve. Right, and the the beauty of using this versus Excel or versus a calculator is that you can clearly see your equation that you're trying to solve, as opposed to typing it into a TI-85. I guess in TI-85 you can get the screen gets kind of cumbersome. Here you have more real estate. Same thing with Excel. Now, I want to run this. How do I run this? There's several ways to run this. Okay, you see how my cursor is blinking on that line. Well, if my cursor is blinking on that line, if I click run right there, look what happens. That line one was sent down here to R to process, and R gave us the output, which is what? The answer, 56,156.1. You see that? So that's one way to process it. Another way to process it is you can highlight the whole thing. Let's say you have multiple, multiple lines of code multiple lines of code, which you guys will. You can you can highlight all those lines. In this case, we just have one. And again, click Run. Same thing. It sent that command to R, and R gave you the output, the results. Now, I'll see another slick way to do it is wherever the cursor is, if you want to do it line by line. For my Apple users, if you press your Command button and press Enter at the same time, boom, it processes automatically. And obviously, that's that is one of, that's probably the, uh, I do that the most, if anything. And for my PC users, if you do control, press control and enter, you can process that line. Nice and easy, right? Nice, slick, and easy. Okay? So here it's a calculator. So what? By the way, notice that as I change the script, this becomes red with a star in it. That's basically just trying to signal to you, hey, save it. So again, my Apple users do command, you can do command S. You can do it from file up here. You can do it from file up here, or you can do control S, what, what have you, and do the saving. <clears throat> All right. Oops. Now, let's introduce the concept of data containers. And for my programmers, basically variables, computer variables. All right, so what are data containers? 